In 2010, a psychology study had people talking. The study was published in Psychological Science, perhaps the top journal in psychology. It showed that when people adopt a pose they think of as powerful, they will actually end up feeling more powerful. Not only that, but adopting a powerful pose even seemed to change people's hormone levels. Neat findings, right? Next time you are nervous before a test, just do the Superman and you'll be fine. Except when other scientists try to replicate the study, in other words, they re-ran the study to confirm the original results, none of them were able to. This was not for lack of trying. There are now more than a dozen different replication attempts of the power posing effect, none of them successful. Over the last 10 years, many other stories like this have surfaced. Most scientists think this is bad news. Psychologists, like most other scientists, spend much of their time iterating and expanding upon ideas that came before. Progress in science is only possible if scientists can safely build on each other's work. Isaac Newton famously remarked, If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. This means that rerunning studies to confirm earlier results is essential to make sure that scientists really are standing on the shoulders of giants instead of building on sand. Okay, okay, got it. Scientists need to be able to successfully replicate the results of other scientists. Otherwise, they cannot trust them. But how bad is the situation in psychology really? Are stories like the one about the Superman study failing to replicate indicators of a full-blown crisis? Or just a routine episode of science correcting itself? Well, believe it or not, that's at least in part a philosophical question. Here's one nice way of thinking about this question due to the philosopher Walter Sinnott Armstrong. Suppose you have a box with 100 thermometers in it. You know that some proportion of the thermometers do not show the temperature reliably, though you do not know which. You pull one thermometer out of the box at random. Are you justified in trusting what it says? Well, clearly this depends on what proportion of the thermometers is not reliable. If only one of the 100 thermometers is not reliable, then you're probably okay. In that case, there's a 99% chance that the thermometer you pulled out of the box will show the temperature correctly. In contrast, if 50 out of the 100 thermometers are not reliable, that would be bad. In that case, whether the thermometer you pulled out of the box shows the correct temperature is basically a coin toss. You might as well throw away the entire box. What this means is that in order to figure out whether psychology is in crisis or not, we need to know more about how many studies in psychology don't replicate. Luckily, we are not completely in the dark here. For example, in 2015, a large group of psychologists re-ran 100 experiments that had previously been published in some of the top journals in psychology. Only 46%, less than half, of these attempted replications were successful. Similar projects have come up with somewhat higher percentages, with up to 85% of successful replications. But for the sake of argument, let's go with the average for now. If we pick 100 psychology studies at random, we expect that about 35 of them would not replicate. Is 35 out of 100 enough to go into crisis mode? Or in terms of thermometers, is a 35% chance of the thermometer you pulled out of the box not showing the correct temperature enough to not trust what it says? Well, in part this depends on how important you think it is that the thermometer gets it right, right? Suppose you are planning an expedition to a distant planet and you have to decide what kind of gear to take with you. In that case, a 35% chance of your thermometer getting it wrong seems really, really bad. After all, your life depends on it. If instead all you want to know is whether to put a coat on to go outside, 35% seems a lot more acceptable. Worst case, you have to go back inside to get your coat. So how important is it that psychological studies get it right? Some of this research has concrete real-life applications. 
Therapy is often based on psychological research, as are a lot of self-help books. Think of them what you will. And even some government policies informed by research in psychology. In such cases, if the studies got it wrong, this could actually impact the well-being of real people. And most would agree that that's a good reason to make really sure that the research is correct. Much research in psychology, however, is not like that. It does not have any real-life applications, really. Instead, it is about trying to understand people, understand what they think, how they feel, how they interact with the world around them. How important it is that this kind of research gets things right ultimately depends on how important one thinks it is for us to have answers to these questions. At least it is safe to assume that most scientists think that this is quite important, otherwise they would not be in the line of work they are in. And many governments seem to agree, they fund a lot of this research after all. Let's say you two are convinced that it is important for research in psychology to get things right. Important enough for you to think that a 35% chance of any given study being false would be unacceptable. Still, isn't there an important difference between the box of thermometers and psychological research? Recall that when we introduced the thermometer thought experiment, we said that you cannot tell which of the thermometers in the box are accurate. This assumption is important. Suppose you could tell which thermometers are accurate. Perhaps the thermometers that show the correct temperature are red, while all the others are blue. You again pull out one of the thermometers at random. Are you justified in trusting it? Well, yeah, at least if it is red. Red thermometers are accurate. In other words, if you can tell which thermometers are accurate, the fact that 35 of the 100 thermometers are unreliable no longer means that the thermometer you picked out of the box has a 35% chance of being inaccurate. Instead, it's either red and you can trust it, or it is blue and you throw it away. This still isn't great. Perhaps you paid for 100 thermometers and now you have to throw some of them away. But at least you know which thermometers you can work with. But isn't science like that? Scientists are smart, have a lot of education and do research for a living. Surely they can tell good studies from bad studies, right? Perhaps, but perhaps not. For one thing, many studies just don't report the kind of information that would be necessary to decide if the study was done properly. To make matters worse, in 2012, a large number of psychologists were asked a series of questions about their research practices. And it turned out that many of them admitted that they at least sometimes do their research in a way that makes it harder to tell whether they did a proper job. For example, sometimes psychologists will pretend as if they had run their study to test one idea, when in reality the study was not meant to test that idea at all. Moreover, some psychologists apparently just lack the statistical knowledge to tell good from bad studies. All of this does not bode too well for the suggestion that psychologists are usually able to tell good signs from bad signs. Okay. What if psychology really is in a crisis? Let's say we are convinced that more psychological research than we would like has it wrong and that not even scientists can tell good from bad research in advance much of the time. Do we just throw it all onto the fire and run around with our hands in the air? That's certainly an option. But it's not the only option. There are discussions out there about how to make psychology a better science. Quite an intensive one. And there are so many ideas in the room that we will need another video to properly discuss them.